Church. These past few weeks of Advent, we've been preparing ourselves for the coming of Christmas. Are you ready? More importantly, over the past four weeks, we've been looking with hopeful expectation and living faith, so we're lighting the hope candle here. We've been reflecting on what real peace is in a chaotic world. So we've got the peace candle, and we appreciate that joy that comes from really deep within, regardless of what's going on around us. So here's a joy candle. And then last week we had the love candle, and the love the Father, God, has shown to us in giving us the greatest gift of all Jesus was emphasized last week. Today, we light the Christ candle, which is the one in the middle, because it's the one, Jesus is the one, whom all these in ideas have encircled. Jesus is the one who holds it all together. So today I've asked Tyler to help me retell the Christmas story in scripture readings, and we have a few songs that we'll enjoy together. I hope you can participate with us as well. Recalling the events of history, then, we're going to begin about 2,700 years ago, 700 years or so before the birth of Jesus. The prophet Isaiah was writing about a very dark time when the people of God were not really following God's ways. And, well, let's hear what Isaiah says. Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light for those who live in a land of deep darkness a light will shine. And then in, later in Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3, the prophet says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Isaiah gave some more specifics as well. In Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And back in Isaiah 7, verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Skipping to the story of the birth in the New Testament, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 33 says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Right now we're going to hear a song composed by my dad quite a few years ago, Call His Name Jesus. Call His Name Jesus Call 
his name Jesus For he shall save his people from their sin Born in a manger To his own world a stranger You can call to him and a new life begin It was a special night for Mary and Joseph Though impossible to find any room But at last in a barn stall They found a night's refuge And this baby was born to save us all Call his name Jesus Call his name Jesus For he shall save his people from their sin Born in a manger To a world filled with strangers You can come to him and a new life begin Born again by His mercy Oh, there can be no other way He'll save you and keep you He's the same Lord forever Call on Him now, He'll save you today Just call His name Jesus Call his name Jesus For he will save his people from their sins Born in a manger To a world filled with strangers You can come to him and a new life begin Then to hear Mary was pregnant, Joseph, her fiance, had made the decision to call off the engagement quietly. Matthew 1 verses 20 and 21 recounts it this way. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Going back to the Old Testament again, hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Micah pins in chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely for then. His greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Let's go back to the New Testament story, and we're going to read from Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. In Matthew's account, in chapter 2, 1 and 2, and 9 to 11, we read, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. And about that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. My dad wrote a song way back in 1972 um, about wise men that are still seeking Jesus today. Let's hear it. Jesus today. They bring their hearts the best gift. Give him yours without delay. He will give you peace and joy that will not cease. Wise men still seek Jesus today. Glad tidings to all people the angels brought to man. So we should follow to his guiding star. As the wise men sought, they found, he'll be found of you right now. From your heart's door, he isn't very far. Wise men still seek Jesus today. They bring their hearts the best gift. Give him yours without delay. He will give you peace and joy that will not cease. Wise men still seek Jesus today. So now we're reading about yet another wise man who is seeking Jesus. In Luke 2, verses 25 to 35. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people, he is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. 
Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. And then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others to rise. He's been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. When Mary heard those words from Simeon, I'm sure she could not have known the extent to which her soul would be pierced as many years after this prophecy given to her, she witnessed the execution of the Son of God that she bore and raised. And neither could the wise men have predicted that the gifts that they gave would provide for this little family, maybe while they were fleeing to Egypt and later perhaps the myrrh and the frankincense used as embalming spices for the body of Christ when he was laid in the tomb. Dad wrote another song when I was a teen to focus our attention from the Christmas mayhem around the Christmas tree to what the real meaning of Christmas was and is concerning a different kind of tree. The kids have the tree all decorated Their stockings in a roll look nice to me There's something Christmas because of a different kind of tree. There's something for everyone this Christmas. Peace and joy, His grace beyond degree. God came down expressing love for it happened on a different kind of tree The gifts we give each other seem so little When I think of how much God has given me The priceless gift of life with Him forever was given on a different kind of tree. There's something for everyone this Christmas. Peace and joy, His grace beyond degree. God came down And on a different kind of tree Oh, the cross was a different kind of tree Speaking to the early church in Colossae, Paul summarized who Christ was in this way. Colossians 1 verses 15 through 22 Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church which is his body. He's the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead, so he's first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. And this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him, without a single fault. 
as we have been studying through the book of Hebrews, we know that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for all people for all time. His death opened the way for us to access the loving relationship with God our Father and our sin no longer needs separate us. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus read from the scroll, once again, from the prophet Isaiah. 61 verses 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to com comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. In other words, to anyone who's thinking that God is mad at us, Jesus came to show us that God is not mad. Jesus came to show us the love that the Father has and how his love desperately longing to have relationship with us sent Jesus to his death on the cross and it's showing us that God cares enough about right that he will take care of the things that are wrong in justice. At the time of the prophecy Isaiah was speaking to those in exile in Babylon but it also applies to us today those of us who now are spiritually in exile, those of us who are longing maybe for our heavenly home with Christ. Isaiah goes on in chapter 61, 3 through 9. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks, that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. You will be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of the nations and boast in their riches. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, for everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Everyone will realize that they are a people that the Lord has blessed. This prophecy is speaking to those of us today as well who will follow Christ. Friends, the message that was given to Abraham hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, was that through his descendant, born some 1800 years later after Abraham, all the world would be blessed. If you know Jesus Christ today, you know you are precious to God, cherished in his sight, filled with his gifts, blessed by his presence, and beloved in his heart. And this is the kind of good news our world needs to hear today. You are blessed to be a blessing to others. May the wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace fill your hearts and homes this Christmas and in 2024. God bless you.